Welcome to the very first review of the Burberry Experience. Let's get into it. First bottle here is going to be the Old Fitzgerald 1975-1849. Um, the bottom of the stamp bottle stamp says uh, 1975, which, and it's an eight year product, so that leads me to believe that this was distilled in what, 1968 at the Sitzel Weller Distillery. If you go back eight years or during that time, um, this would have been distilled under the Pappy Van Winkle. I always wanted to try something from Sitzel Weller because um, I believe it's like drinking history. Uh, I procured this bottle. Um, quite some time ago and then I waited until my wife and I found out that we were having our first baby um, and I opened it during that in celebration so let's get into it it's a very special bottle to me um, there's a lot of history to it and like I said theoretically this should have been distilled under the Pappy Van Winkle which obviously Stitzel Weller Pappy Van Winkle um, everything that they put out during that time, wherever the brands went, are now sought after. Um, Rebel went to Lux Row eventually, but your Pappies, your Wellers, your Old Fitzgeralds, the ones that come to mind right off the top, are uh, sought after today. They all use weeded Nashville, and it all originated from Pappy Van Winkle distilling at Stutzel Weller. Um, <clears throat> little fun fact, if you will, Maker's Mark is a weeded bourbon because uh, whatever Samuels it was, Bill, or whatever Samuels that started the Maker's Mark distillery, uh, consulted with Happy Van Winkle on how to make bourbon when he first um, started that up. So Maker's Mark has Happy as well to thank for their weeded Nashville. But let's get into this. So this is much more floral than um, I've had than, than I've noted it being in the past, and as you can see, it's almost empty. Um, I pulled a few samples and kept aside, um, but we've done quite a number on this bottle. Floral, dark honey, and like a pear. Um, and that's pretty consistent with what I've gotten out of this bottle in the past. A little bit of oak. Um, I should say it's 90 proof, 8 years. We did mash bill, obviously. And that's the only thing that hasn't been touched on. There is a little bit of that dusty funk that people talk about, but it's not as heavy as the dusty funk that you would get in maybe a bean product or um, wild turkey product. The wild turkey dusty funk is pretty prevalent. I've only had a couple of bean dusties, I believe, and those also had a, a funk to them. So, very, very viscous, um, great mouthfeel, especially at 90 proof. Um, everything I got on the nose definitely comes from the palate. Dark honey, pear, uh, sweetness. It's almost cloyingly sweet, or at least it, it was in the beginning. It still kind of is in there now. Um, it was almost not medicinal as like a medicinal cherry that you would get in maybe a Willet product or a wild turkey product, but almost just like a cough syrup kind of sweetness, but not very, but lacking the medicinal, just a cloying sweetness. Um, as it's been opened, a really nice spice has come in, in the um, on the back end, on the finish, and that has really balanced it out.
So yeah, I mean it's honeycomb, floral, pear, oak, and then there's a nice kind of barrel spice that's coming through um, that it balances out. I'd say this bottle's gotten much, much better as it has opened up and as we drink it down. Um, these bottles can be found on secondary. Um, I'm not here to condone or denounce secondary, the secondary market. However, it is, if, if you want to go after something, sometimes that's your best bet. It's kind of the ugly truth. And <clears throat> hopefully another, hopefully with these reviews, maybe it will tell you whether or help guide you on what to do with the bottles, whether you're seeking them, whether you uh, are thinking about going after them, or maybe you have one and you don't know if you should open it yet or not, or what to make out of it. But those were the primary notes that I got out, out of it. I don't know if I would go out and seek another one, um, given that I've drank a liter of this and I've got a couple samples stashed away. It was a great experience. I'm glad that I did it. Had I not grabbed this bottle, I probably would be wanting to know and seeking it out. I don't know. Over the years, things might change. As this bottle's gone, as my samples are gone, maybe having some more Stitzel Weller um, would be something that I want. But. Yeah, that spice that came through on the back really balanced it out. So it was cloying, it was pear, honeycomb, very sweet, very, almost cough syrupy um, without like the cherry notes or whatever. Um, but it is a fantastic pour in its drinking history. This stuff was made by the Pappy Van Winkle, so can't really go wrong regardless. And you'll always be able to say that you've had that if you choose to offer it a pour, uh, pour if you live in Kentucky, Neat. I don't know if they have any. Uh, the Bardstown Cellar, uh, Bardstown Brewing Company. I've, I've, I haven't been there personally. The bar, the the cellar, uh, but they might have it. Maybe it's the library. I don't know what it's called. But if they have one, I would say offer a pour there. Um, or if so inclined, I, I totally get it. You know, spring for a bottle because of something. Uh, a water because said it's history. Now I'm going to compare it to another. Stitzel Weller product, which is the very old St. Nick 17 year. <clears throat> I opened this bottle on New Year's, so it's only been open for a few months. They are 375s, and I've shared it with quite a few people, and so it's uh, worked its way down quite a bit. This is 108 proof, roughly, 108.2, and they do, this is the OG. There is the OG, the Lost Barrel, the Unicorn Barrel. My understanding is it's, they're all basically the same thing. They all come from this 1980s Stitzelweller distillate that Marcy, the owner of Preservation, purchased in the 90s and then steel vatted whenever the seven, you know, at 17 years. They got put into a steel vat and then over the last few years they've been releasing them periodically and upping the price every time they do release them. Uh, this stuff is straight motor oil, though, and it's got nine years on this. Still Stitzel Weller, not distilled under Pappy. Nine years and a considerable amount of proof. Uh, the cap has popped off, so I'm working out the cork here to see. There we go. If there's any comparisons. Um, there's any similarities, if there's any differences, they're both Stitzel Weller. And, oh, I mean, that's, that stuff is dark. So on the nose, I get the... I get tobacco, I get a medicinal cherry. I get the oak, I get a, like a coconut. A lot of the really old, 
ultra aged stuff that's going to have uh, coconut notes, milk chocolate. Something I've noticed with a lot of different ones. This kind of falls in line with those. Yeah, it has a lot of the same characteristics as this. Maybe a little bit, not this really had the dusty funk, but a little bit less if there was any. Uh, but then it goes tobacco, oak, some coconut, maybe. When I first opened it, there is a little bit of a medicinal cherry thing in there. Uh, when I first opened it, there was a heavy guava, I'm trying to think of some other tropical fruits, uh, maybe like a passion fruit, but it was like the whatever banana company with the, the lady with the basket of fruit on her head, like that's what it was. It was most one of the most unique noses and pours that I ever had at the time. Since then, that's kind of faded, and then the tobacco has taken over, the oak has taken over, it's gotten darker, uh, medicinal cherries kind of came in there. There is a little bit of like an oaky funk in there too. I didn't mean to say oaky funk. Like an earthy funk. Like vegetal. I've seen one review where they mentioned mushrooms. I can kind of see where they're coming from with that. It's kind of uh, on par too. Um, and then there's the oak and barrel spice in the finish. This is an absolute fantastic bottle. Uh, my friends are in Kentucky as of right now, and they have all three of the releases, the Unicorn, the OG, and the uh, Lost Barrel, for about a grand. Um, I was going to ask them to pick me up the Unicorn, because that's the only one that I don't have, um, but I'm going to pass on oh, I did pass on that, because that price isn't there. However, this, this is truly fantastic. Um, it does have the historical aspect of being... Sits a Weller distillate. I said the owner Marcy acquired these from Julian Wayne Van Winkle the third in the nineties, while he was during the time when he was sourcing a lot of barrels out. Um, tobacco is not really a like a cigar box or a cigar wrapper. I'm a huge cigar fan. I worked at a cigar shop for a brief time, um, but that's something I don't pick up too frequently on bourbons. This smells like a cigar wrapper. Yeah, darker flavors coming through in now. Um, there's a weird thing on the finish that's really, really good. I don't know if I, it's almost like a Coca-Cola note on the, on the finish, like a mix between coconut and then it goes coconut and then almost like a, a, a cola note and then oak and like barrel spice. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, quite possibly a top 10 all time favorite for me. Um, and I mean, the color is just ridiculous on this. Uh, if I had a choice between these two or had to choose between these two, I, I would choose the um, Very Old St. Nick 17 here. These are still available at the distillery, uh, but you're talking 375 versus a liter. I don't know how long these will be around for, uh, but these are long gone, obviously, so uh, you'll either have to go to like a Justin's House of Bourbon or some old school whoever sells dusty bottles or resort to secondary and like I said I'm not here to condone or support that um, I'm just here to give honest reviews about good whiskey or allocated whiskey or unicorn depending on on what the review is um, and as always the bourbon experience is all about good pours and great times with whoever you're with 
uh, whiskey's meant to be enjoyed. So crack those bottles. Cheers.